Hello there everyone and welcome. Today's guide is all about the best storyteller relics. That is, all of the items that you can give to the storyteller so he can restore into very powerful artifacts. And some of these are actually so powerful that they do make up for some of the best, if not outright the best items in the game for certain item slots, like boots, helmets, rings, and also quick slots. That's how powerful these items can be. A lot of them can also be missable, which is why I decided to make this guide with everything you need to know in one place. But before we get started, I think it's important to explain how the process actually works. So first, you find a piece of the artifact, but not in a form that you can actually use. After you find these items, you have to show them to the storyteller through dialogue, and then you get the corresponding quests like restoring an antique ring, restoring an ancient cloak, restoring broken gauntlets, and so on. And then he will tell you exactly what you need in order to truly restore the artifact into a usable version. For example, for the antique ring, we need 4 vials of magic essence and 2 bars of cold iron. After all that is done, you'll finally get your very powerful item. Sometimes you can actually find the first item before you have the required materials to actually turn it into a full powered artifact. So without further ado, let's get started with our very powerful storyteller relics list as usual, in order of availability, that is, how soon you can first find each of the items that you then turn into relics later. Alright, so first we have the ever so useful Covenant of the Inheritor. This is not only the first storyteller relic you can find, but also, honestly, one of the best items in the entire game. It actually works as a quick slot item, and whenever you turn it on, all of your party members, pets included, you get not only a plus 2 bonus to cast your level checks to overcome spell resistance, which is great on its own, but also, and most importantly, all of their weapons, including natural attacks, such as from pet bites, claws and so on, will become good aligned and count as if they were made of cold iron, which means we can easily penetrate the demon's physical resistance against damage. Because most, if not all of the demons in the game, have physical resistance that is only bypassed by having weapons of cold iron and good. With this, you can simply ignore that. It's as easy as it sounds. Using this item is very easy. It will appear in your quick slot or also your ability tab here. So holy symbol of Ayomedai. All you have to do is click on it and that's it, it's turned on. And will now affect all of your party members. There is a downside to it, however. I'm not sure why they coded the item in this way, but Whenever you go to a loading screen, so when changing areas and so on, this item will be turned off. It's a bit annoying, but you know, it's just the way it's implemented in the game so far. I do hope they change it. On the other hand, we do have infinite uses of this, so all you have to do is turn it on again. Anyways, this item is a must. You should always have it on, all of times. The benefits you get are simply amazing. And to find this extremely useful relic, you first need to get the piece of holy symbol item in this house here in the southwestern part of the market square map in Canabras during chapter 1. The same house that is burning. Notice that even the description itself here will say this looks like the work of a Brimorak, a pyromaniac demon. And it is right. So be prepared because inside you're going to face a pretty powerful Brimorak that can easily destroy your party if you're not properly prepared. And there is a very easy way to trivialize this battle. All it requires is for you to buy a scroll of Resist Fire Communo from the Cleric Merchant in the Tavern area. It is somewhat expensive, but very worth it, because with this spell, you can avoid most of the Brimorak's damage. Also, be careful when properly positioning your characters here, because... What's going on here? There, as you might have already noticed, the door here will act as a choke point, and there's also two Abricandilu demons before we can reach the Brimorak. So try to send your bigger characters like pets and mounted characters before the other ones so they can actually reach the enemies first instead of being blocked by the door. Notice that the battle pretty much already starts as you send your first character here and the Brimorak will be at the back pretty close to a trap. But as I said before, the main danger of the Brimorak is its fire brawl ability and also the breath weapon, both of which do fire damage, but to resist fire communo, you won't be taking any hits from that. Notice how the poor Brimorak only dealt around 1 damage to 
all of our characters with his fireball spell. The Dredge ally actually took a lot more damage than us. After that, all we have to do is basically whack the enemies to death. Because the Brimorak is a one trick pony, he can't really do much outside of fire damage. <laughs> Be careful with the trap because it is a lightning bolt trap, so be sure to disarm it. After you deal with the enemies, simply loot this tiny box here. And here we are, the piece of a holy symbol, which is the item we need. But you can only give it to the storyteller the earliest at chapter 2. You want it the earliest possible. And here's how to do it. During chapter 2, as soon as you start chapter 2 that is, the storyteller will be at your crusader camp right here, in the middle of it, close to Nanyo and this crusader wizard. Be sure to talk with the storyteller right at this point. So choose please examine the items I'm carrying, give the storyteller the broken buckle and the necessary materials, and there we go, we'll get the Covenant of the Inheritor Relic. The reason I'm telling you this is because if you don't do it at the start of chapter 2, right after you leave your camp for the first time basically, the storyteller will also leave, and he only returns at chapter 3, after you deal with the Red Dragon quest. So that's an entire chapter, and a very important chapter too, because of all of the demons you'll fight during the Siege of Dresden, that you'll miss out on this relic if you don't do it right at the start of chapter 2. You really don't want to miss this. The second item we can find, and also one of the best rings in the game, is the Ring of Summoning. As the name implies, its main ability does actually let you summon either Axiomites or Soul Eaters, randomly, but this doesn't really matter unless you are a summoner. The most important ability is that, as a permanent passive, all allies, including the wearer, within a 30 feet area, gain a plus 2 bonus to weapon damage rolls and plus 2 to their saving throws against all attacks or effects created by chaotic creatures. So you know all of the demons you fight in the game? you now have a permanent plus 2 bonus to damage and also to your saving throws against their spells and abilities. It's simply amazing, because it is actually an untyped bonus, so we'll stack with everything else. And to get the Ring of Summoning, you first have to find the Melted Shard of a Ring item that you can easily get in the Houndheart campsite area during Chapter 2, the same area that you have to go for Scylla's personal quest, the League of the Inspiring Cart. So right here, in this area of the map, near the tent, loot the box to the right. Here we are, the Melted Shard of a Ring. For your last Chapter 2 Storyteller Relic, we also have the Stern Hand Gauntlets. Now, this pair of gauntlets can have its uses, but at the same time, it can be pretty dangerous as well. First, you equip it on your character of choice, and then your pet or companion will actually get the bonus to strength. It is an untyped bonus, as you can see here, other plus 6, which can certainly add up, as pets do try to get quite amazing strength scores by default when properly buffed. The main issue is the downside of the gear, so you get the plus 6 bonus to strength, but at the start of battle, your companion will also always have to make a will saving throw of DC 17, or start attacking your own party members. This can be very dangerous. You absolutely don't want a 70 or 80 plus strength dog attacking your own characters. Even if 17 is pretty low and it's very easy to actually overcome that, even with low rolls, by buffing your pet, there is always a chance you'll roll a 1. And 1s are automatic failures, no matter how high your saving throw bonus is. So honestly, I would much rather not make use of the plus 6 untied bonus to strength and then not have to risk my own extremely overpowered dog attacking my own allies on the eventuality that he rolls a 1. Trickster characters on the other hand through the aid of the Knowledge World 2 mythic trick can actually overcome this because whenever any of your party members rolls a 1 it will instead become a 20 which is an automatic success instead of failure. Now, and to get the broken gauntlets, you first need to find the item called Shard of Knight's Braces that you can get in the Dresden prison during the siege at the end of chapter 2. The same place where you can find a Ruchalei, and the item is right here in the same cell with this insane prisoner. 
Just click on the little lever next to the door. And here we are, the Shard of Knights Bracers, that you can also restore the earliest at Chapter 3 after rescuing the Storyteller from the Red Dragon. Now let's talk about our Chapter 3 Storyteller relics, and there's actually two very important ones. The first, and you might have already heard about it, is the Ronex Sacrifice Boots, which are by far the best boots in Pathfinder Wrath of the Righteous. These boots give your character a massive plus 8 bonus to Dexterity as Enhancement, you can't actually find anything that increases your dexterity by such a high amount. And the benefits don't even stop there, it also gives you a plus 10 bonus to mobility and athletics, which is pretty good. And lastly, it doubles the bonuses you gain from haste to armor class, attack rolls and reflex saving throws. Which is great because this bonus from haste counts as untyped in the case of attack bonus or dodge for armor class and both stack. Lastly, whenever the enemy gets a critical hit against you, they also become stunned for 1d4 rounds, and notice this effect does not have a save at all. So we work even on unfair against tough enemies. Overall, these boots are simply insane, and you should always invest in getting them if you can. Getting them can be a bit tricky, however, and they are certainly missable. I actually already have a guide explaining in depth how to get these boots, link to the side here, so I'll try to keep it shorter here. All you have to do is... In Chapter 3, go to the Winter Sun area, and when you're there, simply interact with all of the lore standing stones by solving skill checks, usually lore and knowledge checks. They're actually spread to the entire map of Winter Sun, and you do have to interact with them all. After doing this, the Heart of Stone will become interactable, and inside, you'll find the item you need to enchant into this very powerful pair of boots by showing them to the storyteller. Now, because they do cost magical hide. You can only really get them at chapter 4 minimum, as that is when most of the beast hides start spawning in the demon city. And you can always meet the storyteller in his tower during chapter 4. Second we have the very unique Bound of Possibility cloak, which actually has different effects depending on your mythic path. And they can be either amazing or disappointing, so I might as well cover them all. The Trickster cloak is... Honestly, very disappointing. It actually requires you to fail a saving throw to have an effect, which is something you never want to do. You'd much rather just pass your saving throws. Whenever you fail a saving throw, you gain a plus 10 bonus on all skill checks and saving throws for one round. Which is, you know, fine, but at the cost of failing a saving throw? <laughs> Not really. The worst part is it, it even debuffs you after that, <laughs> making you sad and giving you a minus one penalty to attack, armor class and damage rolls until the end of combat, which is crazy. Honestly, just skip this cloak. The Trickster Path is very powerful, but the Trickster Cloak is playing awful. We also have the Swarm Cloak. I'm not that experienced with the Swarm Path, but I do know they can create clones, and starting from patch 1.2, which is in beta at the moment, they'll be able to do it as soon as you enter into the Swarm Path, so at Mythic Rank 8 at the start of Chapter 5. Whenever one of your clone dies, you spawn a challenge rating 18 Locust Swarm, which attacks the enemies for you. I haven't really tested this yet, so I'm not sure how powerful it can be, but considering you can have 5 clones that are going to defer in strength based on how powerful your character can be, I imagine you might also not find this useful. It's going to depend on how powerful the summon can be. Now, the Lich Cloak is actually one of the best in the whole game. It will empower your lore beyond the grave, to grant an additional plus 4 bonus to strength, dexterity and charisma scores. Because this affects all of your undead party members, including your main lich character after they truly become a lich at mythic rank 9 and go through the lich transformation, the bonuses are simply huge. Because they are untyped bonuses, so we'll stack with the normal bonus from Bound of Possibility and all other sorts of ability bonuses. The Gold Dragon Cloak gives your dragon character two additional castings of level 9 spells, which can be good, but you know, if you aren't a full spell caster with access to level 9 spells, it won't really matter for you. It also empowers your breath to deal an additional 20 divine damage and increase the difficulty class by 2. Honestly, I have tested the Gold Dragon before, and the breath ability is very disappointing. First, it costs a standard action, and there's no way to quicken it, so all you can do in a round is cast your dragon breath. The damage also is nothing special because it does have a saving throw and unlike the actual spells of the game, 
you can't maximize or empower the damage, so it's pretty disappointing. But of course, if you are a full spellcaster, two extra level 9 slots can be pretty good. The Devil Mythic Path Cloak gives you three additional uses of your Hell Seal's ability. But honestly, I didn't find the seal abilities that useful besides the seal of fire eating. For the demon character, get a buff so that our demon rage and demon aspect abilities now grant their bonuses as if you were 3 mythic ranks higher. The issue I have with this cloak is that at least as far as the current version of the game, it won't actually empower your demon rage abilities beyond the max which is mythic rank 10. And you can really only enchant these cloaks usually at chapter 5, which is already late game. By the time you get this cloak, your demon will already be either mythic rank 9 or 10, so it doesn't really have much uses. The Azato cloak is also somewhat disappointing. So 50% of the damage you take will be redirected to Ivo, which can seem good, but you know, you can just mount Ivo by the time you get this cloak, which means Ivo will already take all of the melee and range of attacks your character would have taken otherwise. In addition, I will also get Unpenetrable Damage Reduction equal to your Mythic rank. 10 Unpenetrable Damage Reduction can be good, but once again, by the time you get this cloak, it's nothing special. The Angel Cloak can be pretty good. Your Sword of Heaven ability will deal an additional 4 dice of damage, or also heal an additional 4 dice instead of just plus 2. This can be useful because it's basically an extra 2 caster level increase which means more damage with your untyped angel spells, which are the best ones, that is, Storm of Justice and Bolt of Justice. The issue I have with this is that when I did my angel mythic path, it wasn't really working properly, I wasn't getting the caster level increase. And even then, at most it's going to mean something like 2d10 or 2d12 damage to your Bolt and Storm of Justice. Lastly, we have the Aeon Cloak, which is actually, in my opinion, another one of the strongest mythic cloaks in the game, Besides Lich, so the first effect isn't really anything special, each round the enemies will have to pass a will saving throw or be slowed, which is fine I guess, but the best part comes now. All of your allies will be under a constant haste effect, haste is one of the best spells in the game as far as buffs, and this means permanent haste without needing to invest in greater enduring spells. Also, they gain a plus 4 insight bonus to attack rolls, saving throws and skill checks, and this insight bonus is huge. Usually the highest bonus to insight you'll get is plus 2 through the inspiring command ability and this glow gives us double that while also being a permanent effect. And to find the bound of possibility cloak, you first need to get the required item from a Redus laboratory during chapter 3. So you start right here, all you have to do is basically walk right ahead and then enter this first circular area here with all of the red swarms which aren't really troublesome enemies. So just defeat them all, and you can get it right here in this shelf. Here we are, the ancient scrap of script cover leather. <laughs> For some reason, <laughs> the red swarms are still squeaking. Anyways, while you can get this first item at chapter 3, I do believe you can only actually get the true cloak at chapter 5. Lastly, for our chapter 4 storyteller relic, we have the Shy Lily's helmet. This helmet is so powerful that I do believe it is the best helmet overall for strength-based characters. The effect is pretty simple but very useful. You gain a plus 4 profane bonus to strength and also a plus 2 profane bonus to armor class. Profane bonuses are actually extremely rare, outside of Nocticula's gift. You might consider this somewhat useless for your main character, depending on your character's class. For example, my Gendarme who has Nocticula's gift already gains a plus 4 from Profane Ascension to his strength, so the helmet isn't really doing anything for him, besides the increase to armor class. On the other hand, because this will work for all of your other characters, pets included, you can always save this for them to highly increase their strength and armor class. This helmet is also very missable, you can only find it during chapter 4. I also already have a guide link to the side here on how to get it, but to keep it simple, Whenever you reach the area of Savamalek's mansion, the same area you have to go for Wendwag and Lun's personal quests during Chapter 4, use the spell called Dimension Door to teleport your characters to the rooftop of the mansion. You can also use a Rod of Dimension Door. Once you reach the rooftop, you'll find a chest with, with the crumpled demon helmet inside, which is the relic that you need to show to the storyteller so that it can become the Shy Lady's helmet. Alright everyone, so this was it for my Storyteller Relics Guide. 
I hope I've managed to properly show you how extremely powerful and useful these relics can be and they are certainly game changers, especially ones like the Covenant of the Inheritor that you can get very early, just at chapter 2. As usual, if you found this guide useful, then please remember to like, subscribe and even become a member to access some pretty neat and exclusive perks and help support the channel if you can. If you think I missed something about these relics, please be sure to comment down below. Thank you for watching and see you next time, friends!